Hey guys, Christo Garcia, My Swing Evolution. I am so excited to talk about today's video, which is, you know, I'll tell you, they say that you never appreciate something until you lose it. And I'll tell you, I lost something for a little while and now I've got it back and I don't want to ever let go of it again. And I think that's part of the value of my swing evolution is I've been around the block. I've tried just about everything. But you may remember a couple years ago, I used to talk a lot about the Hogan roll and the push pull. And then I kind of got away from that because one of the people I'm you know, really close with believes that the arms are very passive and the wrists are passive in the golf swing. So I was doing that and really, I mean, putting a lot of work into it and really devoted myself to that. But some information has come my way. Some things have happened that led me down a different path and I've rediscovered these things. And I'll tell you, I've, you know, I'm just hitting the ball, you know, like an animal right now. And uh, I was hitting the ball really well when I made the Hogan code, but I've continued tinkering and exploring and trying to find other things that may or may not work. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you the story about where I got to today was you may remember about Five, six months ago, I made a video called, the, I was talking about the quarterback, you know, trying to get in that position at the top. And uh, I felt a lot of leverage there. And then you guys surely remember that I was doing the straight leg backswing thing where I was building a lot more leverage. Well, my buddy Zach, you know, my young friend who's, you know, just an amazing plus level golfer. Uh, we were playing in a skins game a couple weeks ago and he's like, Chris, you picked your head up. Keep your head down. And so I started doing that. And in doing that, I started to remember more what it was like when I was a kid playing golf, you know, just being over the top of the ball, aiming the face and hitting it. And that's what I've been trying to do for a long time is get back to instinctual golf, swinging my swing. You know, obviously my swing was pretty crappy 10 years ago. But how can I marry being natural with good technique? Oh, this guy's going to be on today. So as Bruce Lee says, unnatural naturalness. You know, you can't be a robot, but you can't be a wild man. You know, you've got to be a blend of both. So let's take a moment here and just listen to the sound of me hitting these golf balls. It just has a different ring to it. So guys, I'm going to be going through all this stuff at the MSC Intensive July 3rd in Tampa, Florida at West Chase. So I hope that you'll come down and meet me there. It's going to be an amazing time. We're going to have TrackMan. We're going to have K-Vest. And I'm going to be going through all this new information that I'm putting into my new version of the Hogan Code that's going to be incredible. So come to the MSC Hogan Clinic at West Chase, July 3rd. Hit me up, Christo, at My Swing Evolution if you're interested. Hit them long and hit them straight. All right, so here I am loosening up with some one-arm swings because... Uh... I'm really wanting to feel like I'm throwing the club head down through the hip. Good ball, yeah. Didn't have a warm up, just stepped up to play. Good ball. Yeah. There it is. I was ripping some bombs. Took that right over the trees. Stay right there. Which is actually. The most enjoyable thing about this swing that I'm doing is the freedom to hit the crap out of the ball. That's what I always wanted when I was watching the pro tournaments uh, in person, was I wanted to be able to feel like I could, you know, really hit it. And 
for the last few years I've been trying to do this softy cakes thing. Oh. But this is definitely a lot more fun. It's more my natural way of swinging the golf club. So let's take a look at this swing in slow motion here. Let's watch it through one time. That was another one piped right down the middle. Uh, this is probably my favorite swing of the day. So I've got several things I'm working on here. I've got good address structure. I'm going to take the club back outside of my hands and keep my upper left arm connected. I'm allowing my right leg to straighten a little bit, which braces me from sliding off the ball. I want to keep a steady head. So right here is where my transition begins. You'll see my lower body begin to fall, my counter fall into my lead foot. And observe how much I've lifted my lead foot. I am completely de-weighted because I'm about to pound the heck out of this thing. I, I don't, I mean, that's why long drivers do this, but you can hit it long drive style with control. That's the thing that Ben Hogan said that drives me crazy is he said, the harder I swung, the straighter it flew. You know, the, I wish I was a giant. I wish I had three right hands. I've been trying to play without any hands. But now I've got my hands back, which is so thrilling, which, you know, going back to the Hogan code, you know, I had the Hogan roll and the push pull and all that stuff. Well, I'm, I'm doing that again. I am, I am back on board. So here we're going to watch. I'm immediately going to start to do the Hogan roll. You're going to see that face go from fairly open. Again, my, my grip is, you know, my flat swing, the, the club isn't wide open, but I'm going to start turning it down. I'm rolling the face down onto the plane. And then I'm just gassing it right through the hit. You know, I'm, I'm gassing it as hard as I can, basically. So we're going to watch my lead knee. I've got a little cowboy there, you'll notice, because I want to have some flex in my knee. I don't want my knee to be too straight too early. It's on the way to straight, and that's what's helping me leverage the top end of the club. Nice impact position. And there you see the knee snap and the full release of the club head. I could almost feel how Freddie could let go of his, his right hand at this point, like he's literally thrown the club head down through the hit. So once again, I'm just rolling the face down, the Hogan roll, I'm trying my best to keep my head down as I'm just ripping that thing through the impact zone. Basically swinging, you know, the force of the club is bringing me around up to the left. I'm trying to keep my head down. That's why my face is buried in my shoulder. But that was just another smoked drive right up the middle. And um, I'm so excited about this, this work that I'm doing. And I can explain it in 100% detail at the MSE Intensive in Tampa, Florida, July 3rd. So if you're interested, this is going to be a hot one. You know, we're going to have the K-Vest, we're going to have the track man, and uh, I'm really excited to take a look at what my body's doing in 3D action. So come on down, hit me up, Christo, at MySwingEvolution.com if you'd like more information on the MSC Intensive in Tampa, Florida at West Chase on July 3rd. Hit them long and hit them straight. It's hard to describe the sound when Mr. Hogan hit a shot. He had this, this tenacity about him. It's really the stuff legends are made of. 
He was like Michelangelo and Da Vinci. You know, he was an artist with a with a golf club. This is Ben Hogan's locker right here, number 50. He caddied for my dad. That was the beginning of their relationship. Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. He knew what was going to happen, and there wasn't isn't anything he could do about it. Why he actually decided at that point in time to share what he told me, I, I have no idea. What I think he did was he applied physics better than everybody else. Ben Hogan never watched Jack Nicholas practice, but Jack Nicholas watched Ben Hogan practice. People say Hogan won't ever talk to you. Well, Hogan talked to me a lot.